Okay. All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our class, BC310 on church and ministry administration. Thank you for joining us. Let's take a moment of prayer and we will start. Could somebody please um, lead us in prayer? The class will start. John, yes, let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this morning. We ask for your grace uh, to be with us as we learn. Today, God, we pray that you would speak to us um, and help us to all listen and understand and comprehend and also um, apply this in our practical leadership life. For oh God, we pray that you would be our master, you would be our leader and help us to understand, oh God. We thank you for this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Okay, good morning once again. Um, today we are going to get into um, a new chapter, another chapter on finances, on managing finances. We kind of introduced this topic um, last week. Let me go ahead and share the uh, screen. And um, we'll get started. All right. Finance, accounting, budget. So we said last week, uh, as we introduced this, uh, this is a very important area of ministry. How we manage finances, uh, how we keep our accounting, all of that. It can make or break the ministry. You know, when we are starting out, uh, initially, the early days, uh, maybe there's not much money to manage and <laughs> things are easy. You know, it's a little bit, okay, it's fine, you can manage. But once people, st example, if you're planting, you're leading a church, and once people start at attending the coming into the church congregation, they're giving money, um, then uh, as, as the contributions become more, and you've got so many things to pay and do. It's very because even more important to manage things properly. And people are also trusting, and they're trusting the church. Basically, they're trusting us who are leading the church that we will not misuse the money, we'll not misuse the money, all those things. So, so um, all of those things matter. And if people lose trust, they feel like no oh, money is not being managed properly or money is being misused or whatever, they are going to, you know, become reluctant, hesitant to give, and it's going to impact the ministry and so on. So uh, we want to talk about some things here uh, about just managing money, uh, some basic things, uh, get into, you know, how, how we are doing it. Um, we began with uh, some a biblical perspective, which is, how do you, you know, how do you raise money? How do you get money to do the ministry? You know, um, and I just said some simple principles. First is we share the vision. We tell people, this is what I feel God has called me to do. This is the vision that God wants us to journey with. So you share the vision and then you let God move upon the hearts of people to give to the vision. Right? But don't force people. Don't, you know, don't compel people. Just share the vision and they'll give. If God moves in their heart, you know. If it's not there, then don't, don't pressurize, don't press, put pressure on people. So you have to give, otherwise we have to close the church, we have to stop the ministry, we can't do anything, no. Right? Just share the vision. Okay, God has called us to do this. We are going to do this. This is the vision God has given us. Those of you who want to please. If you feel in your heart you want to give, give. Right? So that is the way the Bible also tells us. Right? Let each man give, not out of compulsion, not grudgingly, but as you purpose in your heart, you give. Right? So we should follow that same principle. Whatever you feel in your heart, you give. Secondly, our goal as ministers is we will serve people spiritually, let them sow materially. That's a biblical principle. That if you give into their life spiritually, they can give financially. 
that is perfectly fine. That is God's method. So we must focus on, I want to do a good job spiritually. Spiritually, I'll serve the people. Minister God's word, pray with them, pray for them, teach them the things of God, help them grow in their faith. Take care of them spiritually, let them grow financially. Okay? Now, it is very, so the principle is you will reap from where you sow. In some cases, God will let you reap from where you have not sown. But the normal thing is you will reap from where you sow. So if you're sowing into the lives of, uh, let's say, a congregation, they will give financially to the ministry. That's the normal thing. Sometimes, some strangers, you don't know anybody, they have not, you have not touched their life or you may not know anything, they will come and give financially. That is okay. That is purely, you know, what God would do. God would move in somebody's heart. They don't, you don't know them. You may not have even served them, but they come and give. Fine. That's okay. But that's like more of an exception. I think that is God's grace. But the normal is you, you sow spiritually, they will give back financially. That's also biblical. Um, and so thirdly, is we have to be a good, we have to be good stewards of the money along with spiritual things. Yes, we are being, we have been given charge of spiritual things, we are ministering God's word, but we also have to take care of the money, take care of it, right? And and God, Jesus spoke in that uh, Luke sixteen. He said, you know, if if we are not faithful in the unrighteous mammon, which is money, who will give to us the true riches? Right? Will God trust, entrust us with the true riches, with eternal riches, eternal things? So God is looking at how we manage money to see whether he can actually entrust us with spiritual things. You know, there's that relation there. So we have to be good stewards of money. We also have to be accountable to the people who have given to us. Right? So if people have given to us, we have to be able to willing to say, hey, you, yeah, I can't you. I remember once, some years ago, one one family came met me, and and they they come from some other, you know, they they been to been part of other churches, and they were sharing like where uh, the pastor would say, you know, we have to raise, we need money to, you know, for church construction. Please give, so people will give. Then thing is being constructed. Money, instead he'll take that money and he will buy a big car, he'll buy something else. And so people are wondering, hey, he said we need money for doing something, church work, or buying an instrument for the church. We have given money, but that is not happening. Where is the money going? So when they go and ask the pastor, pastor, you know, we gave money for this, but that's not happened there. So no, you cannot ask me anything. Don't ask me. Yeah? So it's almost like, I am not accountable. I'm not answerable. I'm not going to answer you. you know? And so after some time, I don't know, after like two or two year period, these people got really, you know, uh, how to say, upset. They got disturbed because they saw this thing repeating. We collect money for something it, that won't happen, but the money is being used for something. His own thing, and then they can't even ask. They ask, don't ask me anything. So that that's a sign where the pastor was not being accountable to the people. Right? The other ones were giving. So we, we have to live with the sense that hey, we are answerable, answerable to the people. Right? We have to answer. They, they, they've given it to us, uh, entrusted it. And also we have to be answerable to government authorities, civic authorities, because we are operating in a country. We are part of a country, we are, we are citizens of a country, which means if you're a citizen of the country, you follow the rules of the country, the lands. Uh, and part of it is, you know, if you're running an organization or a church, you have to give account to what is happening. So you have to follow the rules of the lands. So, and all of these things are biblical principles. So uh, I just wanted to share these these practical things. Now, uh, before we get into you know what uh, what we do, I, I want to share some some simple things here, some guide guidelines here. One is, especially in the early, so from the beginning, from the beginning, from the time you start the ministry, keep proper accounts. 
Sometimes we think, hey, now I'm just getting 100 rupees. <laughs> Why I should bother keeping an account of this? When I'm making, you know, 100,000 rupees, maybe then I will keep accounts. No, that's not the right approach. The right approach is from the time you start, from day one, keep proper accounts. Okay? So when we started APC, this was going back to 2001, uh, I used to write in a little notebook. Yeah. Uh, one day. So whatever offering will come, offering we get on Sunday, I will sit. So we didn't have any other person. I had to do everything. So I would sit <laughs> write in a notebook, you know, hundred whatever the denomination was, how many numbers of that, this is the offering, right? To keep simple. It was very simple. It was very small. You know, hardly 15, 20, less than that, 20, less than 20 people. But the point was, I have to keep good accounts. So just one page, hardly any amount, but I will write it down, keep it. Uh, that, that, and that's how we start in a simple notebook. I think if I go and search those, that those notebook, notebooks be lying somewhere. Uh, but that's how we start it, you know, keep account. Then uh, uh, shortly after that, we registered uh, APC as a legal trust. Then we started depositing the money into the church account. So that's the second point. Don't mix personal account and church account. These are two separate things. Your personal account is your personal. Church account must be a separate account in the name of the church. So whatever offering comes, it goes into that church account. So from the beginning, that's the way we follow. Right? The mistake many people make, especially in the early days, is, hey, money is so little, I'll just put it in my personal account. See, if somebody gave it to you personally, of course, you can put it in your personal account. But if they gave it for church, it should be kept separate. I, I, I agree that in the beginning, you know, the amounts will be very small. So we may not even think why I should open another account for these small amounts. But it is a principle, right? If you start right, then you can grow right. Okay? So keep these two accounts separate. Now, you know, what the problem that happens is if somebody takes, you know, they collect the Sunday service offering, it may be a small amount, they go put it into their personal account, then it's very difficult to separate. What is your personal amount? What was the amount that was actually given for the church? Because your put all goes into one bank account. And you're using it as it's your purse. Now the, the pastor would use it as it was his personal money. And so this complete, they lose track. And eventually, basically, what usually happens is the church money is used for all the personal things. You know? So from beginning, keep it separate. So start keeping proper accounts. Keep it separate. Now, the thing we did from the beginning is. And those days it was very small, of course, but we put everything and uh, we put everything into a software system. Right? Okay? Uh, so this was 2001. Uh, so by that time, of course, you know, people were using computers and software systems all available. Uh, so uh, although I would record everything in a notebook, every any expense, everything, I'll, I'll put it in a notebook. Then once a week, one accountant will come. She had very little work, hardly two hours of work. She'll come, uh, she will enter it into the accounting system, type it in, finish, done. But it, hardly anything, but, but again, the principle is important, right? That we want to maintain everything in a good way. So we, uh, in India, of course, here we, um, uh, the, uh, a software system that is used often in many small businesses, small organizations is tally, tally accounting system. That's what's used uh, many uh, small organizations, not not for bigger ones, they use bigger things. But Tally is good for small and mid sized uh, organizations. So that's what we started using, and we're still using just that uh, to keep all of it. So from the beginning, uh, although I would record it in a notebook, uh, record everything in a notebook, I will give it to this person, this accountant who comes once a week, who came once a week. And she'll just put it in the system, make sure everything is right. Done. But it's just two hours, nothing, hardly any work. And uh, 
So that's how it starts. Right? Then, as the congregation grew, uh, and uh, the contributions also started increasing, then I got I was not involved. So I slowly I let the account of it. You handle all the work. Right? You handle the work. I will make sure that uh, uh, you know. So we we started following certain principles, like every and I'll just I, I probably have put it down later, but I'll just mention it now and I'll mention it again later. You know, every purchase must have a bill. You need to have a proof that you know uh, we have spent this amount for this thing. Right? You can't just say I spent the money and. It is put it no no it has to have a proper bill. So from the beginning that was what followed. If there's no bill, then we can't treat it as a real transaction. Uh, of course, today uh, we have the advantage that all the transactions can be done online. Like you know, you can you know, the invoice can come online and you can pay it online. In those days, we used to collect physical bills. Right? <laughs> Give me a bill. <laughs> I need a bill. I need a record to show that we have spent this money. So, so those are things you have to have a bill. Without a bill, that money will not be paid. We need a proof that this money is being used for this purchase. So every uh, bills of we started you know, collecting the bills. It of course uh, you know by this time we had an admin person. So it's okay. You know you handle this. Make sure you collect all the bills. Give it to the accountant. Accountant will come once a week. Accountant needs all the bills. Uh, they will tally everything, put it into the system, check everything, make sure uh, everything's fine. Right? And just as as a as just as just for information, I'm not saying we should learn accounting or anything. I, I did not learn accounting, <laughs> but just as information, uh, we should tell the people who are doing accounting right, to maintain a double entry bookkeeping method. Right? Double entry. So that means if all credits. And all debits are, are are followed, and this will be taken care of by the software system itself. Okay. And it's like there's an internal check, a double entry system, right? Uh, so the, the all the credits, all the debits, they should match the income, the expense. You're putting it all together, uh, and uh, uh, then when you look at the general ledger, that is the overall picture. You can see that um, uh, everything is tallied. Right? Everything, uh, your income, your expense tallies. If there's a mistake, it will show up. Otherwise, in a general ledger, you can see okay, everything is tallying fine. And then, uh, so you know, we we had the right people to do this work. I am not directly involved. There's an accountant and all that, and admin people will collect all the bills. So, and then uh, afterwards, we started creating what we call as ledger heads, meaning people can uh, when people can give money uh, to particular funds. Like there's a general fund, so, so where people give tithes, offerings, or goes there. But if somebody says, "Use this money for publication." Then we want to make sure that money is actually used for public use. We can't take that money and use it for uh, something else, right? So we had to, and we still have these. We have different ledger heads where we can track um, money is coming from which location, which church location. Uh, money is given to which ministry area or which project. You know, people are giving. So then we can say, okay, this much money was given to that person. Make sure it is used for that part. So all this can be done within our uh, within the system. So that's a big advantage of using a software system. It can it's very easy to maintain. You just tell the accountant, hey, uh, we are starting a new project. We are starting a new ministry. If somebody gives an offering for that ministry, it must be accounted there. Keep it there. Of course, the bank account is a common bank account. All the money goes there. But in your software system, you know exactly how much of that amount belongs here, belongs here, belongs here. You know, and track everything. Right? 
Now, of course, uh, today, a lot of transactions happen online. Meaning, uh, I would say maybe, maybe 90% of contributions today are coming online. You know, only less than 10% are what we get in the Sunday morning service in, uh, as a cash offer. You know. So most people have become comfortable um, doing online transactions. So their tithes, their offerings, it comes online, it goes straight into the bank account. That is a very good thing because there's no human involvement there. It goes straight into the bank. Very good. Now, some people still prefer putting some money in the offering uh, during the service. Okay, you know, uh, that we still collect that. But that is like about, I would say, maybe 10% or maybe even less. I'm just estimating. So uh, that's one thing. But now, uh, at least the way we do it in India is we do not track who is giving the money. We don't need to. The government doesn't require us to do that. In uh, in some other countries, for example, in the US, they will track who is giving the money because they need to give a tax deductible receipt to that individual, and they can claim tax deduction. So they will, you know, most of the time they they will track you know, who is giving the money. They know. Us here, we don't know. Right? So the money is going directly in the account. We don't know necessarily. I mean, we can. You know, we can in some cases we can see the name of the people, but generally we don't track it. We don't say, oh, no, how much this person gave on that. We don't track it, and uh, we don't want to know. We just let the accountant handle all that. That's not needed. Right. So, uh, so just to uh, repeat, from the beginning, keep accounts. Right. Let us, especially when you're starting a ministry, don't neglect it, because even if the ministry is small. As a principle, we should keep uh, try and use a software system. Uh, it makes everything easy, and uh, uh, you know have the right people to help you take care of this. Okay. So uh, let's talk about a little bit about. Uh, let let me pause. Any questions for any from anyone at this point? <coughs> what is this? Oh, the second uh, the software system. Yes. Yeah, the second one is a free or open source software. Um, so we, yeah, so we can download it and use it. So Tally um, is a licensed one, but actually the Tally license also is uh, quite cheap. And I don't know what the cost for license is today, but I think uh, it must be fifty thousand or less to get one uh, machine license. Um, fifty thousand rupees. Or less. No, I, I don't. I know exact cost today. Like when we bought it, those days it was twenty five thousand rupees. That was in two thousand one. Uh, one user license, and it was uh, we upgraded it. Uh, but it's not very expensive. So you, buy, you just need one computer, one user one license. Use it yeah. yeah. So they give you a license per machine. So and that's all you need. Like only because all your all your accounting can be kept in one computer which only the accountant will have access to and then you back up the data you know keep that up so it somewhere uh, yeah but you just need one one user license this one okay. these two are uh, free uh, uh, a free account so you can just download and use it so just give both options yeah so uh, let's just talk about our uh, accounting system here. Uh, like, let's get into some details. Um, so, like I said in the very beginning, when we started for a, our initial period, we had just one external accountant who would come. Oh, let me share that. Let me sorry, I had to share this PDF. All right, so in the beginning, let's, I'm going back to 2001, when we started, we had just one external accountant come. And like I said, this lady would come just for maybe two hours in the week. Basically her job is put everything into the system, take the bank account, everything is fine. So she, she had full access to everything, the software system, to our bank account, 
uh, to all the bills, everything. So she will come, put it in, fine. Work was very little, not much. Then as things started growing, that means now we had more transactions, more money coming in, more money going out. So her work increased. So, so, this, so basically this external accountant came from an external accounting firm. We did not have our own accountants. Uh, she came from an external accounting firm. So we only paid for their work, like we had a fixed thing. Okay. This person's coming only two hours a week. That's all we will pay. So it was, it was easy. Like we don't have to worry about anything else. The work increased, uh, the amount of transactions coming in, transactions going out increased, all the other expenses increasing. So, okay, so then she, uh, we, changed, we, we moved to, okay, uh, this person will come half a day, four hours a week to do all the work. So, so as our, you know, the transactions began to increase and the work was increasing, we also increased the um, hours by this accountant. We paid a little bit more, but again, it was, Easy, meaning external accountant, she came only for the required number of hours, did the work, went away, we had no problem. So it was that. And uh, our responsibility is to keep all the records, yeah. all the bills, collect all the bills, keep it ready, uh, so that when she came, she can just do her work very quickly, check everything, go. Then, uh, once a month, uh, they will give us a report. So every month, we continue it even now, at the end of every month, before the seventh of the next month, I will get two Excel sheets as a report. Um, actually, and two Excel sheets, but there's a lot of information inside. One is what we call as a uh, income expense report, which means for the previous month, what was the in or total income, you know, where it came from. So we track, you know, every location and what came online. Nowadays, because everything is online, we, we can't track which location because people are from everywhere and so on. But at least what came online, what came through, the cash offerings, all that. The full details are there. Um, income, expense, what are all the expenses? And then by the head headings, main headings, not every detail, but by the headings, these are all the expenses. So income expense report. Uh, so I can quickly see where we are, what happened last month. Everything is okay. So I'll just open it. I'll look at it very quickly. Okay. Uh, if there are any anything you know that is not correct, I will ask questions. Okay. And uh, so and then there is the uh, uh, receipts. Uh, it's almost like a similar to income expense, but it's like a double. Let's just say uh, all the receipts, all the uh, amount that we receive, and so on. So we have two of these reports, uh, which I will look at. And in that report, also we track a lot of other things. Example, we track month by month over the last ten years. Actually, more than ten years. What has been happening? So I I can open a sheet. I will open a sheet. I can go back over 10 years, every month, what was the income, what was the expense. So if I want to, I, and I can see on that sheet, example, uh, we are in the month of October, okay. October uh, or September, last month, September. September 2023, what was the income, what was the expense? I can compare across the years. So September 2022, income expense, you know, 21, 20, 2019. So I can just, I can just visually look and I'd say, okay, because what, what happens is we can observe trends in giving. You know, certain months in the year, um, the offerings will be more, or it would go down, uh, or our, in, uh, our expense will go up. Sometimes there are months where our expense will be more than the income. Uh, and then I know, I, I know why, because su suppose we print more books, uh, then I know that particular month, uh we spent more money on printing books so our expense went over our income so okay nothing to be afraid you know it was a known expense we know it happened or if we had a big conference or something our expense went more than the income okay so i can look uh, you know i can look at the whole 
overall picture across a number of years, I get a quick understanding, of, okay, things are fine. Right? Um, so these, this is, that's, these reports, I don't spend too much time. I just have a quick look. Right? The work is done by the account. My job is uh, make sure everything is okay. If there is something wrong, I have to ask the question. Right? I'm not going into all the details. The details are being taken care of by the accountant. The reports uh, help me see where things are. If something has gone wrong, should we, you know, should we take corrective action? Those kinds of things. If our expense is more, and I'm not sure why, I go to the income expense report. I can look there. Oh, this month, this was what was the expense. Oh, it's okay, fine. So I can look at these things. So uh, the accountant uh, started working with us. Uh, our monthly reports, uh, as I mentioned, and then we have we do audits. Audits means another person doing the check. Right? So we do audits uh, once every. Initially, there was a time we should do every three months. Now we've kept it to every six months, at least twice a year. So. Uh, Every let me just say every six months we used to do it every quarter. Every six months there will be an audit internal. The, uh, the an external person will come that is different from this accountant will come and check everything and say they check all the previous months everything is okay uh, anything wrong so they will highlight. You know, so you're you're checking it. So you do it every six months and then at the end of the year. At the end of the financial year, everything has to be checked one more time, and an, a financial report has to be made, and that is published on our church website, of course, and things that it, reports are given to the government and all that stuff. So we do two audits plus this financial year check. I think so. And um, so, again, these were done by our external people. Then, after some time, and I've let me, I'm trying to recall which year, um, 20, I think it was, uh, I think it was uh, 2018 or something, somewhere around that, I forget the exact year, we felt that, you know, the work has increased so much, we need to have an internal account, full time. Right? So you can see, like it was almost uh, more than fifteen years after we started that we actually hired a full-time internal accountant. Till then, we're just using the external. So then we felt okay, the work inside is uh, getting a lot. Uh, sorry, I need to move back. I, I think maybe in twenty sixteen we hired an internal person part-time. So our own accountant, uh, who would, uh, her time was divided between administration and accounting. The accounting part is mainly to collect all the bills, collect everything, keep it ready, and the external accountant book down. So we, we made that thing. And then eventually, at some point, we said even that work is getting a lot. So we need a full-time account. So I think the full-time accountant came in 2018 or something. So we had an internal accountant. The external accountant would continue to come every week. So right now what happens is we have a full-time internal accountant, Geetu. She's a full-time internal accountant. She handles everything. Uh, enter it into our system. Then there's an external auditor who comes. Uh, again, I'm not right now we're, we're doing it once in six months, but the auditor will come. Check everything. The monthly reports keep coming. The monthly reports are sent by the external accountant who sends the reports. External auditor checks. Then once a year, there is a big thorough check and report and things say and given. Okay. So um, it's a lot more people involved right now, but it is important. It is good to make sure that everything is great. And then once a year. I mean, uh, uh, the auditors uh, or the accountant can talk to me. They will in touch with me by email every week. 
you know, regularly there's a lot of communication happening. But once a year, we all sit down together. So we actually did it yesterday. So yesterday, our Excel auditors came, internal accountant, external account, we all sat together. They will give a report on, okay, this is where things are. You have to be careful of this. You have to be careful of that. You have to check this. Uh, they will inform me about a change in the government rules. So they said, see, the government has made these changes. You need to be careful of how you're doing this and how you're doing that. You need to change this. and all. So that discussion happened yesterday. So once a year, at least a lot of things happen on email throughout the year. But this will be like an in-person meeting. They have checked everything. They've done their audit. Then they'll come and give a report in person and give advice uh, what we should do differently. Uh, so the reason is we don't want to get into any trouble. right? Uh, we want to make sure we are following the rules. And if the government changes the rules, we have to follow the new rules and make sure everything is being done properly. So that also happens. So that's a lot of responsibility in terms of taking care of, making sure finances are going properly. Everything is in order. Okay. Now, let, let's get into a little bit more detail on what happens in the accounting of church money. We follow a two-person rule. That means um, everywhere, at least two people must be involved when money is being handled. If you have a few more people, it's better. But generally, you need two people involved. That means there shouldn't be one person just deciding and uh, there's two people. So example, when we are counting the offering in church, Right? It will always be in a group of people. So one person is not going to sit and count. I mean, in maybe in the very first <laughs> few weeks, I was the only person sitting and counting. It's okay. But at some point, we changed. Right? Uh, we had an offertory counting team right? that there will be more than at least two people, preferably, preferably three or four people will sit in a group and count the offering. Okay. And it has to be recorded in the book right there in front of everybody with the money you're counting. Right. So this is cash. So if it comes directly to the bank, no, not a problem, uh, you know, no human involvement, but this is cash. So when cash is involved, we are going to have two or more people sitting and counting. Okay. They will count the money, then it has to be written in the notebook, signed by at least two people that this is what we have checked. Uh, whatever envelopes people have used, you know, in, in counting, it's all put together, everything, and it is sent to the church office. Right? And it should read the church office by Monday. So Sunday is the offering, Monday, everything comes to the church office. In the church office, there's another check. So, uh, in the church office, our accountant, Geetu, uh, so everything reaches by Monday, Tuesday, she will check everything. And, of course, we use a machine to count, uh, put in the machine, check, count, count everything in. She'll say, yeah, yeah, everything is fine. Uh, then, it has to go to the bank. So, Tuesday, it is deposited in the bank. And the bank receives must match what was given from the sun, Sunday offering, right? So, so there are, there's a offering check, there's a counting check right there on Sunday. There's a check in the church office. We use a machine for it. Everything is checked. And the third thing is in the bank when it is deposited, all these three numbers should be the same, right? So then we know that the money that was collected on Sunday actually went into the bank on Tuesday, cash. And there are three checks happening. Okay. So when that is done, our internal accountant keeps all the records. That week, external accountant comes and he checks. Everything fine? Yeah. So two people have, you know, more than two people actually have checked everything. Right? Now, this is our process, which we have followed from a long time. And I, 
very long time ago we started following this. But let me tell you that there was a time even somebody found a way to cheat this system. Mm -hmm. So what happened? This happened when some years ago. So somebody had put in the, I don't know if I shared this story with you, so please forgive me if I share this story. Huh? I shared. I shared about the 50,000 rupees. Uh -huh. I shared. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, this somebody had put 50,000 and this lady was taking money. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. She left after that. Yeah. So somehow she managed to take money out of it. They were sitting in a group, you know, even though they were sitting in a group, she found a way to take money out. But uh, she was exposed, and then when we called her, she left. You know? So even though, so what I'm saying is, <laughs> even though we try to be as tight as possible, somebody found a way to, you know, steal money in. And uh, but thank God it was exposed, and uh, we were able to address it. So, so you know, uh, the fact that today people are doing. Um, contributions online is actually a very good thing. You know, we're trying to avoid people giving physical money because there is a possibility we don't know, you know, even though we have kept everything tight, uh, the cash, somebody can just take the cash and then we won't know, you know, it's a it's problem. Anyway, so that was a procedure that we have been following and we continue to follow with our receipts and offering and contributions. Uh, now, um, contribution acknowledgement, let me just say this and then we'll go for a break. We do not give receipts to people for every contribution because we don't know who's giving. We don't record the names and so on. But there are people who send an email and say, uh, I have sent so much money, please confirm. So then we, our account, our account handles this. Then she will check the account, uh, the bank. Uh, okay, yeah, we have received the money. Then she will send an acknowledgement that, thank you so much. We have received your contribution. So we don't do it for everybody. Uh, only for those who say, you know, send an email. They say, I have sent this money. Please confirm. We'll check and send. Uh, but not everybody does that. There are some, a few people who would do that, but not uh, many. All right, uh, I'll get into the other things, uh, details here. Let's pause. Any questions here before we go for our break on uh, finance accounting in the church, in the ministry? Uh, Pastor, regarding the offering counting, so um, could it, it should, should it be in a very public space or it can be in a little isolated space, even if they have two people or three people? Because... Uh, the public space might be a little noisy for them. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. so what is our hand on this? Yeah, I uh, we try to keep it in an open space, meaning uh, uh, that other people can also see, like if they're walking around. But at the same time, uh, like you're saying, it should be comfortable enough for people to talk and you know that way. So I I think either way is okay. Uh, I, if it's a closed room, that's fine. As long as in that room, you know, you're making there are four or five people who are working together, so they're holding each other accountable. Nothing wrong can happen. Uh, so if it's a closed room, also it's fine. Uh, we, uh, of course, because we are in an auditorium, and we just tell people, you know, you sit in the corner of the auditorium and you do your counting here, finish it up. That's fine. Uh, so I think either way is fine. Uh, yeah. As long as um, people are trustworthy and they will take care of the huh? CCTV cameras can be there as well, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so to answer your question, yeah, either way is fine. Uh, we are just because we are meeting in auditorium and there's no closed room available uh, right next door. Uh, we we just let them count in a corner. But if there was a closed room, then I would definitely encourage them to go to the room, but go together. Uh, and it should not be open until everybody's present, you know, uh, so that everything is done as a group 
the danger in having a closed room is if one person goes in before the others and that person opens uh, the offering, uh, other people are not there. So that's the danger of having a closed room. So when you, when you are using a closed room, you also have to have these additional rules that only after all the four or people come in or two people come in, you know, it should be open. And the danger is if you're having only two people, if the two people are in agreement that we will take some money and we'll share between us, <laughs> again, that's a danger, you know. Uh, we have to think uh, of that, prevent that from happening. So that's why it's always nice to have an open space where others are, what, others are you know, can generally just see uh, what's going on. And even if two people are there, if there's no temptation that they collude on taking money away from the offering. Sorry, it looks very messy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks, Pastor. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, let's go for a break. We'll come back in 10 minutes. Thank you.